is proud. He is passionate. He is powerful. He has been heralded since the dawn of time. All people are his family. All places are his home. In the mid-90s, Art Davey and Hori and Gracie shook up the martial arts world and put on a show that is incredibly popular to our days. The first tournaments turned out to be truly bloody and cruel, but this made them specially attractive. It was extremely interesting for people to watch how eight gladiators representing different fighting styles found out which art is the most effective in a fight that is as close as possible to a street fight. One of the fans of Gracie and Davies' creation was Christopher Peters, son of well-known Hollywood producer John Peters, who had a hand in films like Tango and Cash, Wild Wild West, Batman, Ali and many more. So Christopher decided to create his own organization, similar to UFC, and it was named the World Combat Championship. The first tournament was held in 1995 in North Carolina, and attracted about 6,000 people who wanted to watch this show with their own eyes. As planned by Chris, in the first part of the tournament grid, all the strikers were placed, and in the second, there were grapplers. Therefore, in the final, the audience was in for a classic confrontation, the striker against the grappler. This is number one bullshit. The tournament's headliner was a representative of the most fighting family, the legendary Hanser Gracie. Although initially, Chris had plans to attract Hicks and Gracie himself, but he refused due to financial conditions, unlike Hanso who considered that the price of 120000 is not so bad incentive. But the main motivation for Henso was a possible meeting with the fighter on the hype, Bart Whale, who looks like Don Fry at the minimum wage. Bart was provoking Henso in every possible way, calling him a coward and saying that Henso was afraid to fight him because of the significant size difference. Restrictions on the rules in this tournament were minimal, namely not to bite or gouge out the eyes, but talking about duels between groups of grapplers and strikers, there were some differences. Grapplers could fight on the ground for no more than 10 minutes, and the fight time was 22 minutes, and strikers were forbidden to carry out submissions and be on the ground for no more than 2 minutes. The first to enter the cage was Hanzo Gracie, who at that time had only one official fight, in which he submitted kickboxer Luis Augusto Alvarez. But despite his little experience, thanks to his brother Hoyce, he was the clear favourite of the tournament. He was opposed by Judoka Ben Spikers, Dutchman who won silver medal at the World Championships and three times represented his country at the Olympic Games and once took bronze. Ben also apparently understood something about trash talking, since before the fight he tried to put pressure on Hanzo, taunting him at the press conference and phoning him to a hotel room in the middle of the night before the fight. The fight quickly moved to the ground and Gracie was on his back, but soon an excellent sweep that was performed by Henzo changed the situation. Now he's just gotten out of the takedown, he's knee Ben Spikers, and he's working him into the ring. I don't think there's any doubt Tom that Spikers was surprised by that, I didn't think he had just... After Ben lost the back, the fight ended, as Henzo injected several terrible elbows to the back of Ben's head and then took a chuck hold. The referee not so easily managed to pull off Matt Hanzo, while he behaved extremely respectfully to the opponent deliberately stepping onto Ben's head, but in spite of this, the fighters shook hands and it seemed like the conflict was settled. Uh, congratulations, the tradition continues. Tell me one thing before we go into a couple of questions. Were you a little bit surprised that uh, with his experience in judo that he gave you his back the way he did? Yes, I was. And I lose my temper a little bit and I step on his head. This was a mistake mine and it won't happen again. Okay. How do you feel now? How, what are you going to do to prepare for the next event? Go back, relax, meditate. What is your basic mind trip that you take in between matches? Just relax a little bit. Okay. Be ready for the next one. All right. Congratulations, Enzo. Thank you. All that was followed by a duel between strikers Sean McCulley and Eric Paulson. Sean was a Muay Thai representative with a record of 8-0, and all 8 he finished by knockout. As for Eric, the biography of this fighter was much more fancy. The fact is that Eric was a student of Dan Inosanto, one of the three students of Bruce Lee who were allowed to teach, but only Dan could teach his students up to the third level. After Bruce's death, it was Dan who became the main figure in the world of Jeet Kune Do. In addition to it, Eric trained with the Gracie clan. Back in the days when Jiu Jitsu was not as popular as after the first UFC tournament, Eric wanted very much to take part in the first UFCs but because of Hoist, he was declined. 
So, when after a while he was invited to the World Combat Championship, he immediately arrived to the tournament despite the presence of Henzo Gracie there. But actually, as a result of the draw, Eric got into a group of strikers, which made him lose his features since he couldn't use Jiu Jitsu. At the beginning of the fight, fighters exchanged low kicks and rumbled in the clinch. But then, with Sean's efforts, the fight went to the ground. Luckily for the Mu Wai Chai representative, Eric couldn't close the triangle and suffered a dirty beating instead all of the remaining two minutes. Then Sean made the crucial mistake by letting Eric into the back mount, who, when took position, was punching until the opponent tapped as a sign of surrender. In the second grapplers fight, Mike Bitonio appeared in the cage, representing the ancient martial arts of Hawaiian bonebreakers Kuilua. At the same time before the fight, Mike announced a record of 10 to 0, although many reliable sources indicate that this fight was his debut. Opposed to him was Bart Whale, who along with Henso Gracie was the main protagonist of the tournament. Bart was a retired kickboxer and wrestler, but he gained his popularity in pro wrestling by participating in seeming fights in Japan. Before the tournament itself, Bart, thanks to his tongue and appearance, attracted a lot of attention, including Hanzo Gracie, whom he provoked in every possible way. So the audience was extremely curious to see this barrel in a real fight. In the first clinch, Bitonio was able to move Bart to the ground, but he swept and found himself in a more advantageous position. Being downstairs, fighters didn't hesitate to fight as dirty as possible, grabbing by the hair and hitting with the head and the face were used to the maximum. After several minutes on the canvas, Bitonio's face turned into a bloody mess. But he still managed to swip and turn over the moustache defender. Mike's happiness wasn't long since Vale managed to make a triangle with his hands and Mike Bitonio tap and surrender. In the semi-finals, Bart was supposed to come off with Hanzo Gracie, but Whale left the tournament due to injury and their case remained incomplete. In the second strikers battle, James Waring, who was the IBF World Boxing Champion and the World USA Champion, entered the cage. Opposed to him was the representative of the French martial arts savant, Jerome Tocan, for whom this fight, as well as for James, was his debut in fights without rules. The fighters began to fight very carefully and were in no hurry to arrange the massacre. They were aiming with low kicks and waiting for the moment to attack. Jerome tried to work as the first number and delivered much more punches, but then James, pressing him to the net, turned on his hands and changed the alignment. After this fight, Jerome Tukan was no longer seen in fights without rules, and James went to the semi-finals where Eric Paulson was already waiting for him. In the first semi-final, the main characters of this tournament, Hanso Gracie and Bart Whale, were supposed to converge in the cage. But Bart, due to injury, couldn't continue the tournament and was replaced by wrestler Phil Benedict, who fought in an alternative duel with boxer Jerry Bell. Enzo's first attempt to take down the more athletic wrestler was unsuccessful, but then Brazilian still held the takedown and took full mount, began to smash Phil's face until he didn't tap and surrender. This way, the first finalist of the tournament and the representative of the grappling side, as expected, became the favorite, Hanzo Gracie. Hanzo, I noticed you seemed, uh, we know you're comfortable on the ground. In fact, the finish was a classic mount position in jiu-jitsu. But the stand-up situation, you've obviously done some work in the punching and kicking area as well. I have been practicing a lot. The people think that Grace, family member, can punch. I can punch. In the second semi-final, with the participation of strikers, Eric Paulson and James Waring met, who were supposed to compete for a ticket to the final, where Henzo was already waiting for them. Very easy, with a good right hand across, a good left hook, headbutt. They... 
From the very beginning of the fight, Eric moved very well on his feet and punched low kicks. Also worked out James hips in a clinch near the net, trying to slow down the opponent as much as possible. This lazy exchange of single punches and low kicks continued a few minutes, and then the fighters again grappled in a clinch, in which they slowly exchanged blows and annoyed the audience in the hall. After 16 minutes of the fight, James found a way out of the situation. He grabbed Eric by his fine hair and beat both upright and downstairs until Eric's corner threw in the towel. At the announcement of the winner, Jamie was booed by the audience, as they apparently expected a more fair battle in this meeting. As for Eric himself, upon his return from the tournament, he was expelled from the academy by Hicks and Gracie. In the future, he founded a training center, Combat Submission Wrestling, and trained fighters such as Ken Shamrock, Josh Barnett, Renato Sobral, Cap Swanson, Brock Lesnar and many others. In the final battle, in the classic confrontation between the grappler and the striker, James Waring and Hanzo Gracie met, each of whom showed himself in all his glory at this tournament, stepping on the heads of already defeated rivals and pulling out the hair of blonde rivals. In this fight, the difference in the weight of the fighters was 17 kilos, but the Gracie family were never afraid of such layouts. Hanzo almost immediately managed to take James to the ground and there, taking full mount, performed a chalk hold, which ended this fight. Brazilian became the first and the only winner of the World Combat Championship Tournament. After this very successful evening, the organizers decided to hold a second tournament, in which Hanzo Gracie and Bart Whale were to meet in a Super Brawl, but unfortunately this event was never to happen. One woman intervened in the further fate of the organization, and everything collapsed overnight. The fact is that the wife of the main sponsor was very negative towards such hobbies of her husband and gave him a choice when if he shares at least one dollar to organize the second tournament she will file for divorce. This is how the promising organization of the World Combat Championship went into financial trouble and suffered a complete fiasco. And so who knows what they would have been able to come to if they hadn't experienced bankruptcy. Maybe then in our time there was another giant of MMA beside UFC called World Combat Championship. If you like my review and want more of this content, support me with a like and subscription, this is the most pleasant reward, and also suggest your options in the comments to anyone who you would be interested to see the review.